Hey everyone, Michael Anthony here. Van Halen, Chickenfoot, Sammy in the Circle. But anyway, you're listening to the only podcast that is dedicated to breaking down the entire Van Halen catalog one track at a time. And the podcast will rock. Ow! Hello, baby! Welcome, one and all, all you rockers, rockettes, and everything in between. We're all inclusive here at And The Podcast Will Rock. That's right. Welcome back to the show, everybody, our loyal listeners, our followers, all of you guys. We appreciate you. If it's your first time here, welcome. We are the show that dives into the catalog and discography of one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time, Van Halen. And we do it one track at a time. We're nearing the end very, very uh, soon. Not too soon, but soon. I am your co-host, Mark Kamire. With me, as always, Corey Morissette. Corey, how you feeling? Um, is the end in sight, and does it make you sad? It, it does a little bit. Uh, and again, uh, we're still got, kind of going back and forth. What do we do after uh, 25 weeks from now? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, but I was uh, more overwhelmed with feelings of gratitude because uh, this week actually uh, is our two-year anniversary. Uh, so, yes. Since we started the thing, so we've done two complete years uh, covering Van Halen. I, I think we only missed one week in there. Uh, you had some uh, important gig or something happening that we missed. Some, a week, something but, happened, yeah. Yeah, but uh, other than that, we've been on every single week. So uh, I guess this is the kickoff for us for season three. But we we kind of been going by the years. I know everyone's asking why the hell do you have seasons for podcasts? Makes no sense. <laughs> I totally get that. Everybody does. <laughs> Kevin Brown on his Queen Show does seasons every ten episodes. So he's going to have like eighty seven seasons by the time he's done. It's just crazy. Does he take breaks like a long period, like a, no. a summer breaks in between? No, of course not. Well, then it's not a season, Kevin. Come on, get it together. But <laughs> just out of the blue, uh, on like a week or two, goes, "Oh, we're in season five now." It's season five, you guys, you're only a year old. My goodness, but right, anyway, yeah. uh, we in order to you know to properly celebrate, we had to bring back a fan favorite, the one and only Mark. Give her that uh, very special patented intro, as only you can do. You know her, you love her, you love her hot takes, her her uh, analysis, and basically her fandom. Uh, and what better person to bring on to a Van Halen podcast than a true blue Van Halen fan? Please welcome Kelsey Van Halen herself. How you doing, Kelsey? Welcome back. I'm wonderful now that I'm here. It's so good to be back, of course. Um, I'm excited. And you guys started to talk about the end. That makes me sad. Let's not talk about that yet. Come on. We're not there. We still got what, there. 25 weeks. Yeah, we still got plenty. 25 weeks. I bring, yeah, it, I it. bring it up just to uh, kind of keep me grounded to, to I feel, the reality yeah. of it all, you know? But yeah. uh, you're right. You're right. 25 weeks. We still got quite some time. And uh, not to mention, we will probably finish up an album or two. So then we've got live shows. So that's extra content for you guys oh, out yeah. there. So, yep. so we're not quite done yet. It's, it's still some time. We still got some time, but uh, nevertheless, let's not focus on that. Let's focus on the here and now. Uh, what do you say, Corey, uh, you, anything going on over at Van Halen news desk that we want to share with the class? Sure. There's a few new articles on there. I know Eric Senich uh, posted one about David Lee Ross temporary sex office. <laughs> Uh, basically, uh, Don Dawkins came out and said they're actually working on a uh, Dawkins documentary for Netflix. Uh, they, they did one on, on that's Kicks cool. Back. Uh, Twisted hey. Sister had one on there. Um, and now he says it's a, making a movie about Dawkins from the 80s akin to Motley Cruz's biopic. So it might not be a documentary, mm. it might be a, a, a cast thing, but uh, they, they took him down to the old uh, whiskey and uh, asked him, okay, what, what kind of stories do you have with the whiskey? And he said, well, uh, upstairs at the whiskey, there was three dressing rooms and only one bathroom. And you had, you know, nights where it was like four or five bands on the bill and nobody mm -hmm. could use the bathroom because David Lee Roth was using it as his temporary sex office. So he said, you constantly had rock and roll heroes banging on the door saying, get the hell out of there. We got to pee. I'll be out in a minute. So David Lee Roth uh, <laughs> apparently uh, loves using the bathroom as his temporary sex office. That's the important information you can get only from the Van Halen news desk. Period. I mean, you, and who doesn't? <laughs> am, I, am I right? Like, who doesn't love using the the public uh, uh, green room restroom as your personal sex office? I mean, look, if you're if you're David Lee Roth, that's uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
Damn it, Ryan stole my joke. Uh, Ryan Powell in the, <laughs> lurking in the chat. I because I was yep. about to say if Dokken doesn't take an opportunity, even if it is a real documentary or uh, a kind of a biopic, call it documented with two Ks. Uh, and if they don't do that, then that's absolutely um, a missed opportunity, <laughs> and no one deserves to see it. If that's the case, yeah, I'll say it. There you go. Yep. And Tom says thank God for temporary. Yeah, I don't think he's still there uh, using it as a sex office. Right. Uh, thankfully. <laughs> Uh, he yeah, might so be, that's I mean, there. for all he we know. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to play that video of uh, the song that we had? I really don't want oh, you okay, to. Okay. I, I really don't. <laughs> okay, I'll just move on then. Uh, there's an interview with uh, Paul Gilbert uh, from the band Mr. Big, who is just about to wrap up their uh, career, at least touring-wise, uh, mm -hmm. talking about how Van Halen 2 is a life chasing record for him, so that's a good uh, little snippet of an interview you can catch on the news desk. And uh, we also have a little uh, snippet of an interview from Rick Ebbett from Triumph talking about the uh, Us Festival and how it wasn't mm. Van Halen's best moment. Because oh. uh, uh, some people claim, I don't know who these people are, that Triumph uh, kind of stole the show. Uh, May 29th, 1983 on Heavy Metal Day. Uh, I, I'm not a huge Triumph fan, even though they're a Canadian power trio. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. But um, he talked about how Van Halen maybe partied a little too much during the day. And that's why they were off their game a little bit during that <laughs> performance. Which happens I think we, to the we, best of them. Yeah, we, we've already covered uh, on the show quite a bit. And finally, uh, a little uh, tidbit from Alice Cooper. Uh, and he uh, claims in an interview that Eddie Van Halen really wanted a guitar lesson from Glenn Campbell. <laughs> wow. That's because, a, uh, uh, huh. Now, uh, it's kind of well known in guitar circles. Glenn Campbell actually a hell of a guitar player. I'm not a guitar oh, player. Sure. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, you're a guitar player. Uh, do you appreciate the, mm -hmm. uh, the sonic guitar stylings of one Glenn Campbell? I appreciate it, and I definitely respect the man. I guess, if I'm being completely honest, I never would have really considered that he might be uh, super incredible. I guess it makes sense, I guess, if you take a step back and look at his body of work. And, uh, I mean, if you're just really much a super fan of of the group, then uh, you probably would know that. I've never seen him play live, so that probably has a lot to do with the fact that I, it just he was never on my radar in terms of, guitar inspirations but uh, i'm sure there's a lot of people out there our listeners included that could tell me something about uh, glenn campbell so um if he says it then it, it must be true well uh, scott haskin asked not richie blackmore and no we covered that uh, but when steve <laughs> Moses was on the richie show blackmore. <laughs> richie blackmore was a huge douchebag to eddie van halen so we will not be smirch our show anymore by mentioning mr <laughs> blackmore I was uh, gonna Brown. say. Oh, I was just. I was gonna say the when I read his book, when I read Eruption, the only two guitar players that he really talked about were uh, Tony Iommi and um, Eric Clapton. Those were the two that he like. He could have mentioned Glenn Campbell. I don't remember, but like those were the only two that I really because I like as a girl who loves guitar players. Like I was. I'm always very curious of like I would love to know who Eddie took after because you know he's Eddie. So like, but yeah, those were the only two that he really talked about. Other than that, like, I mean, you can you've you've seen interviews with him like when they bring up like Randy Rhodes or like someone else that's like him. He literally is just like, yeah, you know what I mean. Like he doesn't really. Yeah. Other than that, but yeah, he. Those are the only two I remember. Uh, Jerry Reed mm -hmm. is better, and Roy Clark is the best. Uh, they're both better actors, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Uh, Mark, would you say Roy Clark is a better guitar player than uh, Glenn Campbell? No, okay. I would not. Chaz, you're wrong again. We'll get rid of that comment. Uh, <laughs> That's Josh says that. Opinion. How about Chad Atkins? He got a vote. Chad Atkins. Track. Chad Atkins. I might. I might. I might say. Yeah, I might agree with Chad Atkins. Um, Les Paul. Oh yeah, and I mean, Les Paul. And Les that, Paul, that's yeah, kinda, of course. That, that, that's low-hanging fruit. Uh, same with Albert <laughs> Lee. <laughs> Everyone's just going to start naming like all their just, favorite guitar just, players that don't get enough. Yeah, no, he and, definitely like, said okay, that too. A, you know, <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's another vote for uh, Glenn, uh, Jerry Reed and Roy Clark there from Jeff Brewer. So, But uh, yep. go and, and, and read the story, uh, Alice Cooper, because Eddie kind of did it in a roundabout way. Like, hey, Alice, I want to come play golf. And knowing that oh Glenn God, Campbell like, lived down the street uh, from uh -huh. Alice Cooper. So he's like, oh, how's my golf game? Well, as a, as a golfer, you're a pretty good guitar player. He's like, oh, well, you know, <laughs> Glenn Campbell still lived near you. I'd really like a guitar lesson, that kind of thing. So you That's can find brilliant. all that. It is. Oh, Eddie was a smart dude. He was. Uh, you can find all that and more at the Van Halen News Desk, www.vhnd.com. Oh, yeah. We love those guys. That is a move. That's a that's a Mark Kamire move right there. If I've ever heard it, uh, it's <laughs> like, let me let me find a way to weasel my win, uh, my, we, weasel my way into uh, an activity that I know I'm not good at. 
And this is like, yeah. oh, hey, by the way, it's like, where's, uh, you know, just to get in to meet somebody else. Like, that's a, you know, I like to think uh, it's not and not to say that Eddie did that in a sleazy way, but it's just kind of like, uh, I, I see what you're doing. And it's like, I, I acknowledge it. But uh, I like to think I, I don't do it in a sleazy way. But that that is a move I would absolutely do. It's like, I'm going to go try and play golf with Alice Cooper just so I can go meet Glenn Campbell. Well, only Eddie can pull that off. That's like that's, true, that's yeah. the real truth. Yeah, like only true. Eddie can do that. Some good videos of Roy Clark, amazing life. I've only ever saw him on Hee Haw, uh, which mm. I don't think showcased <laughs> his talents. But uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll take your word for it. I, I'm not a big uh, big country guy, so I'll, I'll take the word for it. Roy Clark, pretty talented dude, though. A lot of those country musicians, uh, I mean, even today, uh, mm -hmm. have have like deep like rock and blues roots. So like their playing mm -hmm. is is if you get them by themselves, sometimes you can hear them uh, really uh, showcase it in a live setting. But then when they're playing country, it really li limits what they can mm -hmm. do. Um, these days, country's trying to be rock and sometimes metal and rap and yeah. I, I don't understand that but whatever yeah. but but i know that like some of some of the really 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 talented musicians out there uh play country music and you never know how good they truly are because they're kind of pigeonholed in the genre so if the, if they say roy clark was actually pretty superb then i pr i believe it I, pr I believe it brad paisley plays hot for teacher in his live show I've seen him do it a few times. I'm, I'm glad you brought him up. Brad Paisley is a is a very good example mm -hmm. of, uh, of like he is really really damn good. Mm -hmm. Say what you will about his his music personally, but if you listen to him just play, he's mm -hmm. good. He's very good. So good call. So is Keith Urban. Keith Urban's really good too. He's a really great guitar player. I believe it. Yeah. There, there's talented folks in country. I know you're uh, mm -hmm. Taylor Swift. I think is a, is a talented young lady. I know Mark's not really a fan, but. <laughs> Yeah, look, look what she's doing. She's arguably the most famous person on the planet right now, and mm -hmm. yeah, a billionaire I've, I've, for it. Yeah, I've, I've finally like succumbed to like I don't, I do not hate Taylor Swift. Uh, I don't, and I don't even hate it, uh, like on principle or anything like that. I actually kind of respect what she what she has been doing the last mm -hmm. few years. Is her music my vibe? Hell no, and it never will be. Um, yeah, I agree fine. with that. Yeah. Yep. Do I think she's a great songwriter? Not really, but again, it's not my vibe, but she has, she's made billions of people happy. She's made a ton of money. She doesn't appear to be a dick about it. So that's good. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of times, uh, for her big shows, it really stimulates the economy of the cities that she's a part of. And, mm -hmm. you know, with our, with our nation, at least not, I don't know about yours, Corey's, but ours, like our economy is always in the shitter. So, I mean, whatever helps. So helps, real. So. <laughs> long, too. Yeah. Okay. So as long as she is doing these shows, performing at like a top tier level that supposedly she does. And honestly, if she's doing three to four hour shows each night. I right. salute you. That's that's difficult as that's very, very, very difficult. I don't think people really take that into consideration. But if she's doing that and she's continuing to do it and she's still not a dick about it, then make your money, girl. That's cool. Yeah. My only problem. I think my biggest problem with Taylor is not so much her. It's her fans. And yeah. <laughs> it's but that's a longer conversation for another day. But uh, hey, if you want to hear me rant about it, you know what? We'll, we'll make a Patreon tier for you. <laughs> <laughs> Mark rants about Taylor Swift. I tell you, your economy is in the tank. We have Canadian cities begging, begging Taylor Swift to come play here. And, oh my and gosh. She, she, she's doing six shows in Toronto and five shows in Vancouver, and that's a Canadian tour. And everywhere else is just like, please come. We need some help because Swifties come from all over. We got a stadium in Saskatchewan. Only holds about 35,000, but, she, you know, she could do a, a, sh a week of uh, shows here and sell right. out everyone. and. Yeah, she could do like a quick residency over there just to yeah. uh, help boost the economy and just make a, a lot of uh, good Canadian people happy. Yeah. Ryan, uh, telling That's the story at the time, Ed O'Neill met Taylor Swift and she came up and said hi to him and he knew she was famous but didn't know who she was. So he took a <laughs> selfie with her and sent it to his daughter and said, who is this? And she's like, oh my God, that's Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Oh, yeah. That's how I know her. You, oh, I mean, yeah, that girl. Ed O'Neill can be forgiven for not knowing who Taylor Swift is by face. It's like, but at least he knew is like this is obviously a famous person. I just don't know who it is. Like that's mm. that's all well and good. So that's funny. Uh, yeah, your uh, Canadian cities are begging for a Taylor show. Meanwhile, I'm over here in Nashville, just be like, hey, sleep token, please come here so I can watch <laughs> you guys before it's. I've had enough. But right, 
again, another conversation for another day. So what else is going on in Van Halen news? That's about it. I think we can throw right. it back over to you to talk about the uh, Twitter poll. Little little contentious. Oh, I yes, let's week. talk about this. <laughs> yeah, let's let's talk about it. I mentioned to Corey uh, off air about uh, there was it got heated at one point. It got really heated in the conversation, and and on the surface, I go, but why? Well, you know, we're we're all uh, civilized people, right? Van Halen fans, we never. We never argue about Van Halen right. songs at all. Never. We certainly don't argue about uh, who's singing in the band at the time. We never do that. So why is it happening all of a sudden? And I had my answer right away because we discussed last week a Sammy Hagar era song. And uh, I know, I know there's a lot of you out there that are just on the principle that it's the Hagar era, you're going to go, ah, Fui and Pasha, down vote. I don't even need to hear the song. It's not Dave. It's not Van Halen. And number one, you're wrong. Number two, grow up. And number three, why? why? I just I don't understand. I'll, I'll never understand it. So I looked at the poll, and uh, it's a whopping, this is kind of funny, it's technically 70%, <laughs> but I'll say it, a 69.9% what dreams are made of. Nice. Uh, with a 30% uh, the dream is over for a while there it was uh, a 60-40 split uh, for like I think two days it was 60-40 and I was kind of worried that it was going to shift to 50-50 and then possibly a, like a 51-49 dream is over and that would have made me really sad with all of you because I don't understand why so much hate and so I had to take a look. I had to take a look here, actually. And before I do that, I'm going to throw it to Kelsey. Kelsey, tell me your thoughts on Can't Stop Loving You. Um, I absolutely adore this song. So, like, I looked at the poll because I saw you post it and I was like, oh, I know for sure this is going to be like, it's it's going to disappoint me looking at the results. And it did. And I almost said something and for whatever reason I didn't. And then say, seeing that you said that it got so heated, I'm almost glad that I didn't. Cause I was like, I don't know how I would have just like been able to go through all that and heard about it. But I don't know. It makes me sad when people are like, Oh, it's Sammy. So I'm not going to listen to it. Cause there's so much good music in that era from the Van Halen brothers and from Mike, Mike and from Sammy. And I think like, like I, w I almost tweeted this the other day that Four Unlawful is becoming one of my favorite albums of all time and one of my favorite oh, yeah. Van Halen albums. And I'm like, like I said, it ma it makes me sad because I'm like, you're missing out on so much good Van Halen just because it's not Dave. And so I don't know. That's how I feel about it. I always say Eddie sounds good regardless. So I'll listen to it. So let's see that. That's a, a very good diplomatic and honest answer. And uh, we were we were kind of hoping even for the folks that were just sort of like, eh, it's not for me. And it's like that would have been fine. But instead, we got things like this. And I'm just going to start off uh, for from friend of the show and patron. Uh, so we get to read his tweets out loud on the air. If you want your tweets guaranteed read on the air, join the Patreon, you guys. Uh, I'm going to keep talking about the Patreon probably every five seconds just because I want all of you to join us in this venture. And a lot of you have, so thank you. But starting off, let's just right away. Probably the cause of wh where it got heated. Keith McCoy, friend of the show, not to be confused with uh, uh, Heath Murphy, uh, but Heath <laughs> McCoy. He goes to say, my Van Halen dudes, this is fucking nauseating. Epitomizes the lamest side of Van Hagar. Strong Sammy lyrics? Are you kidding? This is a Hallmark card. The weak sequel to When It's Love. Ooh. Which is almost as bad, but at least that was, an that was interesting musically. He goes on to say, the production on balance was way too polished, contributing greatly to this song's vanilla-ness. Bruce Fairbairn uh, was great for bands suited to a slicker sheen like Bon Jovi or Loverboy, but all kinds of wrong for Van Halen. P.S. Stop picking on jump lyrically. The lyrics <laughs> are minimalist, but it's a cool offbeat metaphor for taking chances in life. I get it, but the lyrics are so stupid. Uh, he says, in Sammy's hands, the same message might have been another damn Hallmark card like this. Having said this, another great show, fellas. So he, he ends it on a positive <laughs> note. And that's good because, you know, Heath is a friend of the show. But, man, he does not we like love you, Heath. <laughs> Stop loving you. Uh, Corey, what are your thoughts on Heath's little manifesto? 
Well, well, first of all, uh, can't you see me standing here? I got my back against the record machine. Is not minimalist? Uh, it's just dumb. <laughs> Uh, sorry. Hey, that's sorry. a bar. I'm not gonna lie. That's a bar. <laughs> <laughs> like melodically, yes. Lyrically, what the hell? But, you know? but I, yeah. I still like Jump. Like, and, and I, I think yeah. they're they're fine. I also thought the lyrics in this one were fine. Uh, he he's going for a vibe, and he hit it. Uh, what's wrong with Hallmark cards? They make a lot of money. My my in laws still sell. You know, they send cards for everything. Happy Halloween cards. Do you know they made such a useless card? We still get that shit in the mail, so people like Hallmark. What, what, what's way too polished? Oh, the album sounds too good. Yeah, I, I, I don't buy that. But I like the fact that Balance sounds good. I like the fact that Foreign Lawful sounds good too. You know, a different kind of good, but you know, it's it sounds great. It's a great sounding album. So uh, the way too polished, uh, I'm not in agree with with or neither of the lyrics. But I'm sorry he didn't like it. He's not. He doesn't. He's not really a ballad dude. Uh, but he he That's likes rare. a lot of Sammy stuff. He's he's not a Sammy yeah. hater per se he just doesn't like the sammy ballad so much and i can see how they're not everybody's cup of tea but at least he's uh you know respectful about it and says another great show and stuff uh some of the replies not so much and uh and by the by uh yes everyone loves hallmark people love hallmark so much they built an empire and now they're uh they're a classic mainstay television uh network so you know say what you will it was, about a, hallmark. It was a reference to the music industry it was actually deep no it wasn't it was about a jukebox <laughs> jazz it's not that fucking deep <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but moving on, Ryan Powell says to dismiss this as just a pop song completely undersells the underlying complexity and color hidden beneath the pop veneer. This one deserves a manifesto. Sorry, Mark. Uh, don't apologize to me. I, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, Ryan, no one does it better than Ryan. So here we go. He goes on to say the structure is sheer perfection, accessible, sure, uh, and perfectly suited to a pop ballad. But it doesn't just rely on the one four five one would expect from a fluff pop song. That's a theory reference. Good job. Uh, the the ostinato soaring over the progression, creating some interesting suspended chords. And just as you get comfortable, it throws the first of many curveballs as it shifts into a minor feel by moving to the fourth, which is major. But Sam's melody centers it around the minor t- uh, minor second. Correct. Uh, I'd love to do a full analysis of the composition, but for relative brevity, I'll note that the pre-chorus one is a completely different progression than pre-chorus two, a full modulation, which is also different from the bridge and pre-chorus three. Beautiful. Every performance in this song shines. Sammy sounds great with a hook-filled soaring melody that approaches the heights of dreams and the lyrics are top-notch ballad. It's not just campy love song. There's conflict and tension while still optimistic. The, ep- the episode covered much of Al's brilliance on this one, and Ed has so many lovely reserved flourishes, including a perfect, uh, a perfect for the song, understated melodic solo. Agreed. <laughs> Uh, Mike provides a tasteful foundation and, as noted, a nice suspension at the very end. This song reflects an effortless complexity that makes it seem like a simple pop song in how well it flows from one thing to the next, but still provides a ton of depth if you want to look for it. Absolutely what dreams are made of. Ryan just nailing. He just, I, I, I love never ryan never apologize for your manifestos or your manifestos however this one was a this was a long one this was like seven tweets um but i appreciate it and it was it was very good uh well thought out and i love that um and you even threw in some uh some music theory uh lingo which i can appreciate although it does give me vietnam flashbacks of college so uh tom says i did a full modulation once i get what he's doing there and i don't like do you know what that's from do you know what it's from mark you're you're pretty young do you know what this reference is from i know know kelsey doesn't she's way too young i know that it's from a movie yeah i know it's been referenced from other is it from strange brew no it's actually from johnny dangerously johnny dangerously shit i don't know why i thought strange joe piscopo michael keaton that's right. I've I've heard it uh, reference like in other media forms. So I was like, wait a minute. Michael Triple got it. The, yeah, there you go. There you go, Michael. Good job. So, uh, but no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, good stuff, Ryan. So moving on, Kevin Brown says, I have a huge sentimental attachment to this song, but objectively, it's beautifully put together. A great example of those Van Halen songs that have breathing room for all the individual parts sh- uh, shine out. I've always loved the bridge and lead into the solo. Uh, hashtag what dreams are made of. So, yeah, there you go. Um, look, I've mentioned nostalgia, I think, uh, in the show. And I remember, you know, if you have a personal connection to the song, 
whether or not it's objectively uh, uh, good or bad, it's like if, if it means something to you because of a personal connection, then you're going to automatically say like, yeah, absolutely. I love it. And there's nothing wrong with that. You have a connection. That's what music's supposed to do. It's supposed to connect you. Uh, Scott Monroe says, not my favorite off balance by a long shot, but it's easily what dreams are made of for several nostalgic and objective reasons. Manifesto inbound. Here he goes. Let's start with nostalgia, which, as Mark so rightly reminds us, is a powerful thing. This was the first Van Halen album I owned as a kid, and I listened to it a bazillion times over the course of a few years. I dig the song sequencing right after Seventh Seal's dark and moody opening Odyssey. Can't Stop Loving You is light, lovely pop in contrast, with so many flourishes from all bandmates. Uh, Sammy's lyrics are on par with most of his Van Halen ballads. It's straightforward and fine. Vocally, though, it's a real standout. His intonation and note holding on only to surrender is a chef's kiss. Ed, Al, and Mike all have moments to shine, and they do so without overshadowing one another. Ed's solo isn't flashy. It's imbued with emotion and personality. Understated, but memorable. I love Can't Stop Loving You. It's a pop side of Van Halen we could have only gotten in the Hagar era, and I'm grateful it and many more tracks on balance were the soundtrack of my youth. Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> and then he, he went on to, uh, to note how many uh, bots named Madeline liked his, his tweets. So <laughs> that, that was a, a hilarious little aside, but uh, no, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Scott, man. Yeah, it was, I love it. I love the mini festos, especially when you guys are full of passion and that those are passionate. And, uh, and I agree with all that assessment. Brad Gould says a fun and lighthearted song with well executed and recorded Sammy's vocal performance is top flight and Eddie shows once again, how to play the song hashtag what dreams are made of. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we mentioned the solo and how uh, the solo is not his flashiest. It's not the longest. Um, certainly I prob, I don't know if I would put it in a overall top 10, but as a personal favorite, I love it. I think it, I think it's great uh, because he plays it to the song he's not he's not showing out where when he very much could if he wanted to and if he did it would still fit but i like he went the subtle approach so uh, uh good assessment there our buddy tom armbruster says if the worst thing you can say is that it's not a fire breathing guitar pyrotechnic showcase that we're used to from the band well that leaves a lot of room for this melodic jewel to shine in the rough um yes if that is the worst thing you can say about it. So, um, yeah, it's not their heaviest song. It's not their most flashy, but, it, you know, it's a power ballad. And there's nothing wrong with power ballads, you guys. There's not. Um, if David Lee could do power ballads, he would have, but he couldn't and he can't. So take that for what, what it's worth. Uh, Greg Zito says, I know this track lacks a lot of things Van Halen fans expect, but there is something genuinely sweet about it. The guitar tone and restrained solo bring a different emotion to the song. Hashtag what dreams are made of. Absolutely. No arguments whatsoever. And then uh, look at this. Scott Everett says about the perfect pop rock ballad. Nothing fancy for Van Halen, but still spectacular in every way. This is Sammy putting in the work lyrically. Interesting that the song is written from his wife's point of view about him in the middle of their divorce. Uh, I did not know that. Sorry, I got distracted. My cats are fighting. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I know it's weird screeching back there. Um, I did. Yeah, I didn't know that was uh, uh, from his wife's point of view. I guess that. Ooh, that's going to bring a new perspective in listening to the song from now on. So thank you so much, Scott, for bringing that to my attention, because I did not it, know. I was the day you said either. Yeah, I didn't know that either. But here I thought the screeching was Christy falling through the ceiling again. Don't even joke. <laughs> no, she is. She is safe and sound at, uh, at her job. So she, she is nowhere near that hole. Uh, Jeff Brewer says, okay, not a horrible song per se. However, this song completely blows when you compare it to the songs that truly demonstrate what made Ed such a unique and exceptional musician. The band sounds good and Sam sings the cheese well, but it's still cheese. Van Halen top 40 bubble gum pop. I like cheese. What, what's your point? Yeah, yeah what's wrong with cheese, dog? Yeah, we, 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 <laughs> we hate cheese now, Jeff. What the yeah, hell? Come on. I did not. I did not sign up to do this podcast 
to hear cheese slandered like that. Okay. So or, yeah, I won't have it, yeah. you know, it's just, I, I just won't. Uh, but thank you for your tweet, Jeff. We, we appreciate you. Uh, and then I think of a cheese head. Uh, ranching of cheese. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look, cheese is it's cheese, cheese is, is life yummy. okay cheese is <laughs> yummy and sometimes and not all cheese is great but uh you, you but you still appreciate it for existing right so, exactly there it is so that's uh there you go that's all our, our patron tweets again you guys if you want your tweets guaranteed red because we did have quite a few uh then <laughs> join the patreon get enjoy in the, the conversation Jeff orders his pizza with no cheese just sauce. Just sauce. <laughs> it's just yeah. bread with sauce on it honestly when I was a kid sometimes I would peel the cheese and toppings off and i just eat it that way and it was delicious so hey again don't be slandering ryan powell is either. ryan powell is on fire tonight i gotta tell you man i don't, I don't know what, what what he's drinking here tonight what he's manifesting or anything but man he is he is on point he was ready he was absolutely ready um i love that uh i think yeah i think that's it unless i'm just gonna make sure i did yeah okay cool so there you go there's the tweets uh that thank you guys so much for uh for contributing and letting us know your thoughts and to uh to heath mccoy i'm gonna get you back on the show and be like how you doing bud how you doing is that rant <laughs> <laughs> no we're all good talk about it kudos to kevin brown for coming to his uh aid uh, kevin brown is just a, a prince yep. among men and uh he oh, said well whenever if anyone is going to pick on heath murphy there's going to be an army behind him and and the, heading that army, the the Maximus uh, of our uh, army, if you will, our Roman army, is, is Kevin Brown. So good on you, Kev. Oh, yeah. Very good on you. He won't stand for it. So that's what I mean when I got heated. There was uh, someone very, very, uh, very much disagreed with uh, Heath's assessment and would not let it go. And uh, Kev had to, Kev jumped in and was like, hang on a second. And, uh, you know, so look, that's funny. have the conversations, you guys, but come on, keep it civil. Keep it civil. If, if it's going to get heated over a, a, a Van Halen <laughs> song, then I just don't know what to say. Are, are you not entertained? Oh, I was thoroughly entertained. Entertained. Which is why I, which is why I didn't jump in the conversation myself, because I knew somebody would. And lo and behold, Kevin Brown, the hero. Not all heroes wear capes. Damn. That's right. There you go. <laughs> all they right. Four so feet tall. They oh, ooh, mm, don't start. You know, I'm, I'm going to find I'm, out. I'm going to find out uh, on Mon or Tuesday morning, actually, because Monday I'm on my way to Saskatoon to see kiss at, in Saskatoon oh, yeah. and then the next so morning. Exciting. Yeah. Next morning, uh, me and Kevin are going to go out to Denny's and have a little breakfast and, and actually meet face to face. So looking forward to that. Kick in that door. What the fuck's up Denny's? We're here to fuck shit. Up. <laughs> yeah, like, right. Make that grand slam your bitch. Oh, again, see, I, I get this wrong every time. I say Kevin's four feet. And he has to correct me. It's four eleven. So sorry. Kevin. <laughs> As a short keen advocator, I'll have no, no slander of that as well. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's good stuff. Make sure to take pictures. I want to see because like, I don't know how tall oh, yeah. you are, Corey, but I, I assume you're tall. Um, I'm going to look eight foot three when I stand next to Kevin, I tell you. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to look like uh, Thomas standing next to Mariano. Uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that was that that was a uh, perspective. That was shocking. Uh, yep, that was yeah, shocking. I, I wasn't yep. prepared for that, um, but uh, that's a. That's a digression, you guys. What you're here for is our next favorite thing. The next favorite thing is not the spinning of the wheel. It's the thing before it. Raise your glasses. Toast with me. Say it with me. Manifestations. All right. We're going to go over to the Discord and check out. You see, uh, if you join the Patreon, you guys, you can join the Discord and keep the conversation rolling. And Cheers. honestly, the, yeah, the, the Discord conversations are some of my favorites just because uh, you guys, I can't keep up, but I love it because I'm <laughs> entertained and I, I just, I, I love the conversations in there. So uh, keep it up. We had a lot of manifestations for this one. Uh, people were excited for us to get back on the show, apparently. So Scott Monroe wants Jamie's crying. Wouldn't be mad about that. Uh, we got Josh wants Josephina because and he said he's sick and that should finish him. Hashtag apologies to Gary. <laughs> well, we, we like, don't want to finish Josh off. No, we want him to feel better. So maybe not Josephina today. Maybe not. Hopefully not. Uh, yeah. Jeff said, uh, somebody get me a doctor. And uh, there you go. So if, if you're if you're feeling sick, Josh, that's what you need. You don't need Josephina. I'd you love need to hear that need song. Help. It might be time. Uh, our, our new friend, Michael, uh, in the patrons, he wants Jamie's crying as well. So there's two uh and let's see uh and then of course so uh, old chasmataz he wants some feckin spanks because oh. he enjoy 
he enjoys chaos and he just wants to see Corey's reaction. I too yeah. want to see Corey's reaction as well, but uh, we'll we'll save it for when it happens. I, and after uh, I was so good on his rush show, which actually dropped uh, yesterday or today, I can't remember which, but uh, my appearance right. on the Rush Rash show is out now. And I got to say, I knocked it out of the park. I was maybe the best guest he's ever had. So uh, he won't tell you that because he's humble, but I'll, I'll let you know that it's a really, really good episode. That one's on my listening queue probably for tomorrow during my workday. So I'm very, very excited to, to listen to Perfect. how you just absolutely nail it. Uh, Tom Armbruster says summer nights. He wants summer oh. nights. Uh, I am shocked we haven't spun that one yet. I would either, love but, uh, to talk about that song. Well, <laughs> we, we shall see. Uh, Ryan Powell, uh, he said he almost forgot, but he made it just in time. <laughs> he, he wants the dream is over. Um, which would be really cool because at this point I'm just, I'm so used to hearing just the little tiny segment we play every once in a while when someone downvotes that it's like, I've almost forgotten how the rest of that song goes. Such a banger. Yeah. I just know the little small part of it. Uh, Chaz says he's still ba basking in the afterglow. Uh, That's for, right. I'm assuming for your rush rash show. Uh, and then Kevin Brown, he says he's going to double down on summer nights. So so we've got uh, some summer nights yes. and we've got some uh, some some Jamie's crying uh, overall, like uh, what people really want to hear. But I ask you, Kelsey, you're on the show. You're back on the show. And uh, what what's what Van Halen tune are you just itching to talk about? Gosh. Oh, my gosh. Well, now. Some, so, oh, my gosh. Summer nights would be wonderful. That's definitely one of my like favorites of theirs, especially off 5150. Yeah. um yeah let me see the wheel oh my gosh um wow. oh dance the night away would be great i love that song oh, um yeah. yeah yeah or somebody get me a doctor that opening riff is like changed my life the first time i heard it so i would love to talk about that song such a great song Ooh. Um, all right yeah let's do it <laughs> <laughs> one of those <laughs> Yeah. Just kind of like thrown it to the wind. Ah, that's fine. I respect it. We're getting down to the wire, so I feel like that's allowed. Uh, Corey, how about yourself? I love Kelsey. Just basically anything. As long yeah, as so I real. Know, I'm good. <laughs> Whatever. Anything, yeah. But because we all love Kelsey, and she said that For Unlawful is quickly becoming one of her favorite records of all time, I'm going to manifest a track from that album. How about a little Top of the World? Ooh. My man. Hey, uh, baby. Would not be mad about it. Would not be mad about it at mm -hmm. all. Uh, let's see. We've still we've still got a few off of uh you know some of our there's early the for you. Van Halen's. Yeah, there's the wheel. Tell you Ooh, what. House of Pain too. Uh, yeah, yeah that would finish would be... off 1984. Yeah, it really would. But I gotta say, um, you know, I could always manifest the Sammy tune, but I think I'd really want to. Uh, I want to listen to Atomic Punk. Oh, I was gonna say that one. I'm glad you said that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm gonna try and try and manifest that one. Um, I'm not going to proxy manifest uh, a song because if if we end up spinning that, that would be very very sad. Yeah, because, because <laughs> we don't we don't have uh, the other guest here with us tonight yeah. to talk about it. So if we spin it, I will, that will be such a bummer. But it is what it is. Uh, we're out of Mulligan, so if we spin it, we're talking about it. So there you go. There you have it. Uh, have, let's see. We have three on the panel here. How many lurkers do we have? We have ten lurking right now. Oh my god! Gosh. You want to prime this thing thirteen times? Oh sure. God, why black not? and blue. Oh, that's a great song. That one, I think. Uh, I would love to do. Actually, you know, Chaz, if you're if you're paying attention, man, and I like, this, don't even want to look. <laughs> don't if if it's too much work, don't do it because what I'm gonna ask of you is probably a lot of work. But if if possible, I'm curious to know which uh uh what song, what track has been the most manifested, the most requested that we've done so far. Um, Ooh. that might that might like, again that might take too much work because you'd have to like go back and listen yeah. to every single episode again never mind we, don't we would have we would have to pay chaz for that and uh yeah you're right you're right happening no but besides no, no. i'm pretty sure the answer is amsterdam because you love your lady and want her on the show again so <laughs> you've requested amsterdam a lot i have um but i know that uh black and blue has been requested a ton yeah uh, i love uh yeah mm. and track uh, you one too whether or not it's been, it's people just trolling. I know spanked has been requested quite heavily. So that's right. Yeah. Um, 
either way though. So I'm just, I'm just curious as to, I wonder, I put it to you, the audience, what song do you think is the most manifest in the, in the show uh, thus far? Uh, get back to me on that. So, God. but if it's uh, primed and if Sammy's ready backstage, what do you say we spin this thing? <laughs> Let's do it. Go, go for Sammy. <laughs> It's going to be a good one, Look ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. You really got me from Van Halen Whoa. 1. Oh, Damn, Kelsey continues her good luck streak. <laughs> would have went crazy oh, for a little dreamer, though. I really would have. That's true. And look how close we were to humans being. Oh, that's a... Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that's a great you... song, too. We're going Somebody back. The doctor but... was close. Yeah. Atomic Punk yeah. was close. It was close. Yeah, look at that. And black and blue was was kind of close, but on oh, Scott's side. happy. One I actually know. There you go, Scott Haskin. Good for you, buddy. <laughs> I would hope you would know this one, but <laughs> classic old school Van Halen. So all of you Rothians will be very happy that we're talking about this one. This um, is fantastic because Kevin Brown, I think, is still in the chat, and he's a huge Kings fan. So I want to hear his comments on the Van Halen version versus the Kings version because to me, there's true. there's no comparison. Like it's a great song, but. Uh, Van Halen really kind of made it their own. They really did. Uh, so much so that there's there's a whole generation, maybe multiple generations of, of fans that don't even realize this is a cover song uh, because it just feels very much like a, a Van Halen song. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Get back to us on that one, Kevin. I'm sure you'll have plenty to say. There might be a lot of people might have something to say about this one because uh, in the course of the show, we have learned that a lot of the people are not down on Van Halen doing covers. Uh, anytime we talk about Diver Down, it's just kind of like, oh, why? It's the covers album. And like, mm -hmm. It's a really good album. I don't understand why you guys are so upset. But uh, yeah, as they said, the original cover tune, uh, if you can call it that. But yeah, this is a classic Van Halen. So I'm, I'm curious to see uh, see what uh, what the chat is going to be on this one. <laughs> Oh, Chaz Charles uh, emphatically says best rock cover band, period. I mean, I can't tell him he's wrong. Not yeah, You're not wrong. I don't think that's a bad thing. Like if it, if you're looking to insult him with that moniker, I don't think it works. I think, yeah, all caps. He's screaming. Yeah. Stop screaming. We, 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 we can hear you. Here we go. Uh, in the conversation for best rock cover, period. 100%. I agree with that sentiment. Yeah. How, do, how about you guys? Yeah, I you know not to show my hand, but uh, yeah, absolutely, I would I would agree with that. Um, now I will say uh, it's it's been a hot second since I've uh, listened to this one. As you guys know, I have put all uh, listening of Van Halen on the back burner while we're doing this journey, unless we covered it. Uh, but any other track is just like nope, I'm going into it as fresh as possible, only with the uh, the knowledge that I already had in my brain over the particular tracks. So this one, it's been a while since I've listened to me. I might have a different opinion on it now. I don't know. All right. Well, what do you say we get right into it? Let's head Hell all yeah. the way back to 1978. This is the first single off of Van Halen's debut album, You Really Got Me. I'm sorry that just that riff mm. is one of the, the the best hard rock uh if you want to call it metal sure uh but just one of the best this hard rock riffs ever it just the, the the tone of it uh the 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 simplicity of it it's just it just it puts you in the mood that you're supposed to be in uh like it fits the vibe of what the song is it just got it it just cooks right from the beginning how about you, Kelsey? What do you think uh, early on? I, I could tell you're not a fan. Oh, no. <laughs> you didn't see me. I was just dancing, actually. Um, no, I love... Oh, my gosh. That opening... Like, just... I think... Hold on. Let me figure out how to phrase this. I think, like, when Van Halen opens and it's just Eddie playing a riff, I think that's, like, one of their best ways they do it because it's, like, shows you what you're expect Like, what you are expecting for the song, like, right off the bat. And it's... He's always so good. And also it's like 
hearing this because it was the first single it's like hearing this it's like you're like wait i know this song but this isn't the song this is someone else and it's what it who like what is the sound and yeah and his little licks in between the um after the riffs and after um dave and um yeah i think eddie sounds great on the song i think they completely like made it their own and i love how sassy david is when he's talking like i can almost see him like moving and talking to this on stage when i hear oh, it yeah for sure i love, I, I love scott's comment here uh, the guitar is the girl and is giving dave back some sass know that yeah yeah that's what i was talking yeah. about yeah. yeah yep that's so funny The harmonies. Oh my the God. <laughs> I will always bring those up because they always sound so good. And I, I remember at least seeing like, I don't know if it was from one of their live shows or from like a performance of seeing them. And I like, there's a shot of Eddie just going, Grr, and I'm like, oh my God, they sound so good. Like, it's just, oh, they sound so good. The uh, Ryan Powell says that riff, that tone sent shockwaves through the industry. No shit. Yeah, absolutely. Made Josh buy a phase 90. There you go. Period. Why wouldn't you? If you're an aspiring guitar player or just a musician, whatever, and you hear that, uh, especially given the time frame of when that comes out, why wouldn't you want to play and sound exactly like that? Right. Just because it's it's infectious. That is uh it's it's you talk about uh killer hooks and Van Halen is so good about writing uh riffs that just really hook. I mean, both uh vocally and musically as well, but something about that, and I know they didn't write this one for sure, but I mean if you didn't know they didn't write it, you would expect it's it sounds like a, mm -hmm. a Van Halen song. Made that's, it their what, own. that's what we mean. They absolutely made it their own. It's it absolutely sounds like something they would have come up with if they hadn't heard the uh, the original. And uh, it just it just fits, man. It just I, I don't I don't even know where to go about that. It just everything about this works. Oh, I will say speaking on the harmonies as well this was uh one of the van halen songs uh that utilized the harmonies that um when i was younger really made me pay attention mm -hmm. to harmonization because when i was younger you know i you know i could sing and i did singing but i didn't take singing seriously at the time because i wanted to be a guitar player after you know hearing eddie van halen but uh, and i and i was aware of you know vocalists throwing harmonies in their songs of course i mean harmonies are nothing new mm -hmm. but this song is i guess maybe it was just because it was van halen i don't know but like this made me pay attention to the fact that harmonies can be utilized in such a way that is not only is it does it sound good for the song um but it just it's cool like i don't know just to me it was just i grew up in a time where we were listening to music where harmonies were either not done or if they're done people you know it just wasn't a cool thing to do because it was about like no be heavy do some screaming or do what don't mm -hmm. do harmonies 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 is stupid like no harmonies is not stupid you're stupid if you just don't understand that harmonies are <laughs> fucking great uh but this was the song i was going like oh okay okay you can make harmonies cool um and but i mean you know shout out shout out to the uh the you know the original uh song for doing it beforehand but still just the Mikey, Eddie, and Dave combo of harmonies is just mm -hmm. chef's kiss. Yummy. Absolutely. Uh, I found a little tidbit on uh, songsfacts.com about You Really Got Me. Uh, this is Van Halen's first single. Uh, they learned a bunch of King songs when they were just starting out, in part because David Lee Roth had one of their greatest hits albums. They often played them live at their shows when they were still a bar band. Uh, David said, quote, they sounded good. And they were great to dance to. So that's why they were there playing you go. songs. There you go. You get the girls dancing, and uh, that's uh, you make your money. That's right.
All right, we're going to get into the guitars here right away, but man, mm-hmm. the drums. Like, those drums are yes. just killer, killer fucking drums. Uh, all hail Alex Van Halen uh, w- once again. You really can't see much more than that. And the bass. No. Uh, Scott wants to throw you know, the bass sits perfectly in the mix. 100% it does. Yeah, it's not doing a lot except playing the main riff. Do, 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 do. But he puts yeah, that little... Just- that little bend on that last note that makes it kind of, kind of, mm-hmm. kind of dirty, which I always appreciated. Mm-hmm. That's old Mikey being playful, because I mean, he's if, if he's going to be holding down the low end and uh, you know the rhythm with the kind of the same uh, rhythmic pattern, then at least you know let him do something to kind of make it his own. Like, even if it's as simple as just bending the string, you know mm-hmm. the uh, the boomer the boomer bends as the kids are now calling them. <laughs> Which I know it, it baffles me that that's a what? term now. Like, yeah, the boomer bends. The boomer um, bends. Yeah, because all the all the boomer musicians just bending those strings to make them, you know, vibrato. And I was like, oh, okay, so guitar vibrato is a bad thing now. Jesus right. Christ. Anyway, but again, another conversation, another time. Uh, but uh, yeah, all hell, Al, absolutely. But also Eddie, not to be outdone, and never, never to be outdone. How do you make this uh, kink song original? How do you make it your own without straying too far away? You play the riff as it is. You know, you give it that uh, Van Halen tone, of course, but his, it's his ornamentation in between. Uh, like Kelsey was alluding to earlier, you know, Dave sings a, a line, the, the guitar comes in, you know, a little finger tapping, you know, whatever. And he's reminding you, he's like, yeah, this might not be our song, but yes, it is, because listen to this. <laughs> It and, you know, now. it's like, this is, yeah, the Kings ain't doing this. I'm doing this. <laughs> and you know, th- this is a Van Halen song because it sounds like this. So uh, I don't know. I just, that's always something I appreciate when they do it really well. And it sounds like they're having fun playing mm-hmm. it. Like I could just, uh, Kelsey, you mentioned, uh, you can just imagine like Dave, like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, his, with his swagger, you know, singing the song, yeah, doing his thing, whatever. Yeah. I imagine <laughs> the entire band just having like these dumb grins on their face playing the song and just because it just sounds like they're having fun mm-hmm. and it's a fun sounding song. So why wouldn't they be having fun, right? Yeah. Well, the one performance that I think of, and someone can tell me this, it's um, where he has those big white boots on and those big white fur boots on. And I can, he's in like that full body jumpsuit and in these big white boots. And I just, I, I, there's a movement of him where he's like dramatically like stepping. And I'm like, this just fits. Like it makes so much sense. And (laughs) just to add on to what you said about Eddie, like I've always said that like Eddie is obviously known for his lead stuff and all that, you know, and all his crazy things that he did, but his rhythm he is so good at making something so groovy and so like hard hitting, like mean street or like unchained, like any of that stuff, like any, like just the riffs like are so just like, Oh yeah. And like, this is a really great example. Like this isn't his riff, but he's playing it like the way he plays all his other riffs. Like it's so mm-hmm. like, it's just good. And it's just, it's, you can dance to it. It's like, yeah. And then to add on, I had, I had another thought when you were talking about, um michael like anytime i hear when i read eruption and he made this comment and i don't know if he was just being a dick or if he was just being a guitarist but he was like i don't know i didn't care like i never heard michael anyways and i like think about that all the time because i hear him and i'm like eddie didn't hear this like he sounds great <laughs> you know what i mean well, or I, like yeah I, I think what eddie was referring to and when we had uh, steve rosen on the show who i uh, had a, a friendship with eddie van halen and interviewed him a lot of times Eddie said in his uh, monitors he just had Alex. Like he didn't have a lot oh, of Dave. He didn't We're have fair. any Michael. Yeah. yeah, he was just playing off Alex the whole time. So I, I think that's probably what he meant there. Oh yeah, but the, yeah, I don't know the way he said it. I was like, I don't know. He could just be being himself, like you know, just be made, making it or being a guitarist, like I said. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I'm gonna be stuck what the on bass that players quote. doing. Yeah, I'm gonna be stuck on that quote for like the rest of the show. Just, just like I don't know if he was being a dick or a guitarist. Or like, a guitarist. There's, there's a very, there's a very thin uh, veil. Yeah. Between, of the two. Oh, I couldn't hear him anyways. I don't know. But yeah, yeah. Just, no, that makes sense though. Like, like are you being a dick right now? Or are you being a guitarist? Are you like, being a guitarist? The What's the so difference? real? So real. But yeah, no, he definitely they they took ownership of this song for sure, and that's why like, yeah, whenever this comes on, it's it's just a nice groovy little tune it's well you know party. who didn't like the van halen version of it was uh, dave davies from the kinks uh, who had this mm-hmm. to say and i quote there's the thing good art isn't always about having the comfiest technique i shouldn't encourage him but i'm sure eddie van halen played better when he was drunk end quote now in fairness dave is probably <laughs> cranky 
because at a concert, a fan approached Dave Davies and said, hey, great job performing that uh, Van Halen cover. <laughs> so I, I think he was a little cranky because of that. And then Ray Davies, his brother, uh, claimed to like the track because it made him laugh. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I mean, Jelly sees a disease. Get well. <laughs> and and I mean, Chaz I, is saying I, what yeah. I was thinking when it came to being a dick and being a guitar player. The terms yeah, are synonymous. <laughs> I mean, there, where's the lie? You know, and I'm I'm speaking as as <laughs> and I'm a guitar a player girl. And, That's just yeah. you know I'm, I'm speaking as a vocalist it. and a guitar player, and I'm here to tell you where's the lie. <laughs> so. I love this. The the Davies brothers, the OG, OG Gallagher's. Gallagher's. Absolutely, that is a great callback, Chaz. One hundred percent. So funny. Chaz is on fire in the chat. Where's Kevin yeah, Brown? Fuck, he took off. Yeah, where he spin a king song and he takes off. What a jerk. You know what he's doing? Gone. He's he's Call gathering him. his hey. He's <laughs> gathering his thoughts. He's probably tweeting he? as we speak. He's he's just like, here's my manifesto. I tweet him. Assholes. Hey. <laughs> come yeah, back like, where, where you at, bro? Where you at? <laughs> yeah. Come on, Kev. MIA at Kev. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chaz just owned the Davies brothers and good autumn. That was fantastic, Chaz. Was good funny. job, buddy. All right. I mean, based, to the based on oh, that sorry. report, there's. I'm just saying, like, based on those quotes, uh, I can't disagree with Chaz's assessment. So, not right. at all. Yeah. Not at all. No, no, he hit the nail right on the head. Right. Um, the next part is my favorite part of the song, so I figured we'd we we'd discuss the guitar solo first. First of all, sure, mm, sure. of course, always. This is such a great. I don't know the way that he does it is like perfect for the song. It's like because the song. I mean, they obviously like elevated the tempo at least a little bit, and so I think I don't know. I think he's playing off exactly like perfectly the way that he's been playing through the whole song like he's just adding a little more touch and it's just as fast it's just as rhythmic and groovy and you know he killed it of yeah. course as always oh, yeah. now uh jeff said something here uh the ice cream man has a better solo but this song's better uh what do you guys think does ice cream man have a better solo than uh, you really got me well that's pretty damn good define better though that that's that's kind of the thing like define better is, is it more technical is it uh like is does better mean um it's shorter or longer uh does better mean uh eddie's yes. utilizing <laughs> uh <laughs> like more of the fretboard than he's than he's using in this one like i don't know like whatever whatever better means um i think i, I think the two are kind of comparable to be honest with you but the thing is they're, they're the solos fit the songs Eddie's really good about doing that, especially during this era. He's good at making the solo fit the song. So I don't know if I can say, I guess that really just comes down to, well, what song do you think is better? And it, it, uh, he said like ice cream man uh, has a better solo, but this song is the better song. So I don't know. It's just kind of like, mm, agree to disagree slash uh, sure. Maybe, I don't know. It just, it really just depends on uh, how you, how you define better. Yeah, good call. And uh, Chaz, here's a hot take. Uh, Jeff's 100% Ice Cream Man is at second best solo ever behind Stay Frosty. Stay Frosty. And then he challenges everyone to prove him wrong. Okay, I will. Yeah, no, I definitely will. <laughs> I you will. know what? I'm going to make will. a thread of this, actually. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> what a Please great idea. I'm, oh, I'm I begging. <laughs> Uh, Kelsey Festo is coming, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, look like, forward I'm, to that. I'm, Eddie's solos that are better that. than Stay Frosty. A thread. <laughs> <laughs> a thread. Please make that happen. Thank, uh, I, we need that. The, the world yep. needs it. Um, I was going to say, Ice Cream Man, I do like the very beginning of that solo, the starts and stops, and then the tapping. I think that's yeah. that like sets the tone almost immediately. Oh, yeah. um, I don't know. I like, I don't know. I like ice cream. I do love the ice cream man solo like that, especially that part, like, cause it starts it off. So like, Oh, this is cool. And mm -hmm. it's like perfect in time with the song. And so I don't know. I think I agree though. I think they're very comparable. I think there's some, mm -hmm. I don't know. I like, think there's some better solos on that album. I don't know. Yeah. And they're not, and that's not to say that, uh, better. Uh, ice cream man 
solo, you know? solo is, yeah. is is better or worse like, right. for me. It just, I just think um, when, when I say they're comparable, I just mean like they both both solos fit the songs appropriately the way they right. should. Yeah, um, I agree. I just, I, yeah, I just, it, again, I, I'm not sure how to, uh, how to argue w- with or against you on, on that one, just because like I, it just defined better. So it, right. it, yeah, that's cool. You know, we'll just, we'll just leave it at that. Scott Mahoney not, says, don't trust yeah, as a judgment. Yeah, He's, yeah. yeah, he doesn't like humans being so. <laughs> that's, that is one. true. That is true. <laughs> humans yeah, being. So. Shame on you, Chess. Shame on you. But you I know. can't wait till we spin that one because I'm. Per- if I'm in the minority oh, on spanked, I think Chaz is going to be in the minority on uh, on humans being. So I think the majority great. of Van Halen fans love that. Yeah. One. No, because I, I thought think- reading about it, I thought that people didn't like that song. Because, but I love right. that song. I think maybe uh, I'm, I might do one up on you. You said uh, I've I've uh, re- manifested Amsterdam a lot. That might be one of the higher tiers. Like I think I've manifested humans being a lot more than I've manifested Good call. Amsterdam. Yep. So now, Good that call. one's got to be of, of the songs manifested. That one's got to be up there somewhere. I would think so. Chaz is just uh, emojis <laughs> is it, now. And, is that a dance emoji? Like I don't know what that is. I, I think so. <laughs> and he says, "Yeah, Scott's not wrong. Chaz is like human being yet." Yeah. Ugh. Well, anyway. And then Scott says he doesn't like human beings, not humans being. He just doesn't like people. <laughs> Fair oh, enough. I'm with him on that one. Yeah, I hate yeah. people. Yeah, I think not that's you everybody. guys. You guys are great. <laughs> <laughs> but not you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Except yeah. for everyone. Our audience. You got, yeah, yeah, everyone listening, you guys are awesome. You guys are fantastic. <laughs> Love the whisper on the you got me so I can't sleep at night. Come on. Oh my gosh. That whole like the little noises in the back. Do you think that's all Dave? Doing those little ad libs in the back. Do you think any of the other guys would have done that? Because I don't. (laughs) No, that that that's all Dave. Yeah. That's what I figured. I was like, do you think they're all just watching him in the stew? Like just being like, (laughs) what are you doing? No, guys, Uh trust me, it's gonna work. (laughs) I need a little more zip dot doobie doo bop. Just just let me do my thing, man. Just let me vibe. Like just leave him alone. He'll put a mic in the bathroom. (laughs) Put a mic in the bathroom. bathroom. I got a lady in here. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Axel, relax. Anyways. Like, just oh that's they recorded the, that segment in the uh whiskey bathroom while oh, right. yeah. God. his office good call so, Scott wow. King. good call that's yep. that's canon that's my head canon now that's what happened. yep that's canon now that happened oh tom <laughs> keeps asking is this the remaster i don't believe it is I, i'm getting this off youtube music and usually it says if it's the remaster uh, i don't believe this one is no it doesn't sound like this this album is just mixed really really well so i don't think uh this is the remastered version yep the dave sass and though sammy has a better voice he can't do that yeah the sass no prob no i'll give you i don't know i think well that's i'll give you that i think sammy had okay not in like a i think sammy has a much more like I don't know. Don't come after me for saying this, people. But I think Sammy has a lot like like of a more like swagger like type of like I think Dave's more flamboyant and um, Mm -hmm. like just in the things that he does. I feel like Sam was more like the cool dude. I feel like Sammy could not pull that off the way that David pulls it off and is still sexy as hell. So like, you know what I mean? So it's like, I yeah, yeah. I don't think Sammy could pull that off. But Sammy has things that he pulls off way better, you know? Yeah. There's a there's a there's a a line of showmanship that separates the two. Yes. Um, not to say they're both showmen, but there's this they're of different levels, let's right. say. Um, and Dave is certainly in kind of like his own world in terms of showmanship for sure, and often imitated, never duplicated. Whereas Sam, you know, Sammy has his own uh, you know swagger, as you say as well. Um, but. Could, could he mimic a Dave Swagger? No, I don't mm-hmm. think. I don't. There's not a lot of people that can. Yeah, and I, I think the uh, a question that came about the remaster was because this mix is fantastic, according to Scott Haskin. And yeah, Tom says sounds amazing. Really does. It's a great sounding album. I haven't listened yeah. to it digitally a lot. I, I put the record on quite a bit, but I haven't mm-hmm. listened to especially on YouTube music. So uh, with the headphones on, yeah, it sounds fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. Oh God! And there's Kevin. What song are we doing? Had some teenage daughter drama. I get. Oh, oh no! My, 
my 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 Damn teenage first. daughter is currently screaming in the background because she thinks she heard a mouse. So I get you. I'm Cheers. texting my wife. So real. Like she's having a panic attack. Don't rush. That that's the last text I got from my wife. Yikes. Aww. My goodness. All right. Sorry, Kev. Uh, we're we're doing a, a little Kings thing you might have heard of. I don't know. Let, let's pick it up from here. You really got me. Uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, oh, you, you I tease, love, you tease. Yes. Oh, I, I was just going to let it go. No, seriously. Sad, I mean, Sadly, we've done that one, but uh, but still, like, oh, oh, my. We just listen to um, it, whatever. <laughs> good. Bonus up. Um, it, uh, <laughs> it would be apt if it was feelings. Yes, because uh, he's around. having teenager drama. My kid's still having a panic attack over... Uh, an alleged mouse, like, oh, God. And now <laughs> but, I'm getting shit in the comments. Why'd you stop it? I yeah, know, it's I know. so real. Come on. <laughs> like, you guys Brown know says, we, yeah, we, we yeah. only cover one I, song, Yeah, you know, we cover that one. <laughs> I swear to God, Van Halen are the only band who have any business covering the Kinks. We talked about the Kinks quite a bit, Kevin, and how much they hated uh, Van Halen's version of this song and how much Van Halen's version kicks theirs in the nuts, so. So if you didn't know uh, that this uh, incredible song was originally a kink song, you would absolutely think it was Van Halen's uh, original. It definitely sounds like one of their originals, I think, anyway. Um, and uh, because that's because they made it their own. So, But uh, we, can, we can discuss that more. And instead, let's, uh, Scott Monroe says, Fearless prediction. This could dethrone little guitars with a 99% what dreams are made of. Let's go. You know what? That would be really cool. I don't know if it's going to happen strictly because, and I'm not talking about you specifically, Scott, I'm talking about everyone else out there. Um, for some reason, our audience is just very down about any time Van Halen does a cover. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, so that might be the only thing that prevents it uh, from getting that high up, but I could be wrong. And part of me kind of really wants to be wrong. But before we do that, we got to we got to we got to find out how we feel about the song. I'm pretty sure I know how we all feel about it, but I'm going to go through the motions anyway. Kelsey, you're back on the show, honorary member of the of the show, of the panel here. Um what would you what what say you about you really got me? Is it what dreams are made of and they got you or did they just not catch you hard enough and the dream is over? Um, yeah, I love this song. I don't know how you can't. This is such a great song. Um, I'm also not a huge Van Halen cover girl. I still listen to them. You're No Good is one of my favorite songs. Um, and, um, honestly, I can't really think. That's like one of my, one of my favorite favorites by them. I think they cover that song so well, but this is another great cover. Um, Eddie's just, Eddie's just so good. I don't know. You can't be disappointed listening to that. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. just like it's and also like I love Van Halen one because it's so Eddie's so young in his sound and it's so um it's just so raw and like yeah, I don't know. It's just it's so good. But yeah, I think they killed it. And I think Dave really sounds great on this song. I think Alex is killing it. Um yeah, they definitely I I agree. They definitely took ownership of this song for sure. Mm. Well, there you go. There's one up vote uh, as as I predicted. And uh, I think I know how this one's going to go. Maybe. I don't know. Sometimes uh, Corey and I have very different opinions. So I ask you, Corey, is you really got me uh, a cover that uh, is what dreams are made of? Or uh, should they just have not? And the dream is over for you. <laughs> Come on. I mean. If I'm going to be on a Van Halen show, I'm going to downvote. You really got me like that ain't fucking happening. I can't downvote anything from this record. Spoiler alert. It's one of, if not the best debut album of all time. I agree. Like, like Appetite for Destruction is pretty fucking great. Mm -hmm. too. That's the other and, one I was thinking of. <laughs> right. It, it kind of goes back and forth. 
uh but come on it's perfect like the the kinks uh, as a band i have some issues with great songwriters though like they've had some fucking mm-hmm. killer tunes lola is such a, a great song and way ahead of its time uh waterloo sunset i think kevin brown is called the perfect uh, pop rock song hard to disagree with that it's a great great tune this is a great rock song uh, all day and all the night is one of my favorite songs of all time but van halen just kind of took it and made it their own and uh, they played the fuck out of it. So, like, when we play the Price is Right game, I'm going to give you a spoiler for both of you. I'll give you a hint. They played it a lot. Okay. So, keep that in mind when you're thinking about how many times the band actually played this tune. But oh it's, they, they, they knock it out of the park. This is Van Halen at their absolute apex. First album, and, and they're doing tunes like this, is absolutely unreal. Uh, the, the, the tone that shook up the industry, uh, 100% uh, fucking right. You really got me now is is an all time classic. Mark Meyer, I can't imagine you voting any other way, but you've surprised me before. So, is this what dreams are made of, or is the dream? <laughs> I kind of would just want to echo literally word for word what you said, but uh, instead I'll just kind of I'll paraphrase my own way of saying it. Why would I do a Van Halen podcast and downvote <laughs> this this song? Like it, that would make no sense. And also, spoiler alert: you are not going to hear me downvote anything from Van Halen one at all. Uh, I think it's. You know, it, I know I'm a Sammy guy, but I, I have never I've never denied my enjoyment of the Dave Era tunes. Obviously, like check the voting check you know all the look at w- the dave era stuff like look what they they brought to the table so yeah i don't even though i think sammy's a better vocalist i'm never gonna like downplay a good track with uh you know dave in the in the vocals um stop hiding your hatred says scott oh i, I never hide my hatred believe me uh this it, this this is known um but no, how do you how do you how are you considered a Van Halen fan? And you, you think this, uh, although it's a cover, it may as well not be because like, it's right. absolutely their song. Nobody listens to the King's version of this song ever. And if they say they do, they're lying. I'm talking to you, Kevin Brown. Uh, you're <laughs> lying because like Van Halen just made it better. It's just like, when you listen to the song hurt, are you listening to nine Inch nails version? Or are you listening to Johnny Cash's? Uh, now these days you're, you probably don't even know that Nine Inch Nails did uh, the song heard like they wrote it. Even Trent Reznor himself is like, that's no longer my song. That's Johnny's because his version is so damn good. You know, and you can say what you want about it, but like that's a prime example. Sometimes uh, when someone comes along and covers a song and makes it their own, it's theirs. All along the Watchtower, oh people gosh. don't even know. People don't even know that's a Bob Dylan song. Bob Dylan himself said, nope. As soon as Jimmy recorded his version, it's his song because holy shit. That's uh, what I was thinking. Say- one of the best covers, rock and roll cover yeah. of all time is yeah. that one. Good call. Good call. Yeah. So like, and much like you really got me, that's, is, that was one of Jimmy's like biggest hits and it wasn't his, but it might as well have been. And now these days it is his. We'll just, we just consider it his. So I think uh, the same principle applies here. This is absolutely just a, a great start what would become the uh the dynasty of uh, van halen man it's just like it's started from this album uh this song i mean you you can count uh you know running with the devil and eruption sure but i mean like this one this one is like a, a big kind of introduction like here we are here we, we're blowing down the doors where we've got purpose we're, we're young and we're excited we're hungry and uh we're ready to fuck shit up and that's what van halen does even when they're doing a cover and making it better than the original like you really got me it's absolutely what dreams are made of i am then there's nothing else to be said about it so there you are all right all right Corey, go ahead play the thing well, I- well, before that, we a great comment in the chat. Chaz Charles says, yeah. Def Leppard owned Waterloo Sunset. Def Leppard, uh, famously one of Kevin Brown's uh, favorite bands, he said back, Def Leppard are not fit to lick Ray Davies' wrinkly old sack. So there you go. Yeah, it, that's an image. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Kevin's going to teach you about the Kings on Ultimate Catalog Clash Season 2. That's not going to happen because I'm winning Season 1. I'm picking the band, and it, it might be Def Leppard now, just because uh, well, I know Kevin Brown hates him. To that, I, I asked Kevin, when you say season two, uh, does that mean like uh, the next show is your season two and then the one after that season three, <laughs> just because, you know, you're, you're weird about how you do seasons or do I have yep. to wait uh, for like next November? Like, you know, you just get back to me on that. I'll, I'll, I'll never understand the, uh, the ten, 10 episode season thing. 
because yeah he's <laughs> Uh, he's so done, funny what, 50 episodes now that's five seasons already <laughs> they're not crazy. a netflix show get it together yeah <laughs> all right well guess what i'm gonna go here and i'm gonna play a little track here there we go it's time to play how many times have van halen played you really got me live in concert mark Meyer, you're the reigning champion so we're gonna make you go first how many times do you think Van Halen performed this track. Remember, you got to be closest to the actual number without going over. I'm aware, but you did. Uh, you gave us a hint. Said they played it yeah. a lot. Lot. So I don't know. It's it, I'm, the temptation of saying an absurdly large number is is there. So I'm yeah. I'm, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I think they played this song 500 times. And even 500? Okay. Damn. Yeah. Kelsey, it comes to you now. That's what I was going to say. Think? Oh, really? You can go yeah. 501 and really fuck you can do 501. Five, 500.5. <laughs> um, God, I'm trying to think. I'll do... Let's go 450. Let's do 450. 450? All right. <laughs> See what Mark happens. Mark Kameyer, guess what? Bam! Oh, yeah. Did I? Did I do it? A winner! You're nowhere close, though. The correct answer is 1,231 times. Wow. A part of me, I, this is no joke. A little part of me wanted to say 1,200, but I, that was the absurd number I was thinking about. I was right. like, that might be too, that might be too far, but. Of course. Dude, I All should right, have gone 501. Enough. That would have been so funny. You should have. You tried <laughs> I know. 501. I was hoping you, you would have. <laughs> Ryan guessed a million, and then he changed that to nine times. Nine times. Yeah, only Jeff said nine. more than 500, which was right. Well, Scott said a bazillion, which is also technically, I guess, correct. Uh, how many shows yeah. did they play total, I guess, would be a pretty good guess, yeah. Uh, but then uh, right. I had a comment for you. Kevin says, a season is whatever I damn well say it is. <laughs> it is your show. That's true. It's your prerogative. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Tune in to the two seasons. to the uh two episode season. <laughs> right. The show. No fair Bob enough, Barker. No, enough. uh the only the only clip I could find was Drew Carey. Sorry, Scott. No Bob Barker. Yeah. Was that the uh is that clip from the episode where uh Adam Duckowitz from Killswitch Engage wins the entire Price is I right. have no idea. I just I just YouTube oh, okay. like uh, Price is Right winning sound, and I like that one because he yells, "You're a winner! You did it! Good job!" And I thought, "Oh, that'll Fair be enough. good for whatever well, yeah. Mark wins." Yeah. There you go. Well, yeah, look it up, you guys. Yeah, uh, from the metal band Kill Switch Engage, whom I love and adore. I'm in a tribute band of them. Uh, their guitarist and and uh, uh, leader of the band went on the Price is Right and won the whole damn thing. So wow. it's hilarious. Yeah, it's great. But uh, yeah, how about that? Over twelve hundred times. I yeah, that makes sense. That that tells me that this song was probably on their set, right? Every tour, yeah, like, almost at least or almost every tour. Um, the, well, the first time they played it. it, according to a setlist.fm, was September eighteenth, nineteen seventy six. So it's actually probably the club more days than that. too. Yeah, yeah. That's, and the backyard yeah. party days too. Right. So they played it even more. Right. Uh, the last and time the TV was performances. Yep. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, 76 September was the first time, according to Celestot.fm, last time was their final show, October 15th, 2015, at the Hollywood Bowl. <laughs> did, uh, I assume Sammy probably did that. Yeah. He's oh, right, yeah. Man. I've yeah. heard him play it, but I've seen a live video of him playing it before. It was on the other uh, I'm going to look that up. Yeah, I'm going to have to, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, you're right. It absolutely, okay. Well, there you go. So, yeah. and, all right, so, case in point. Sammy does a very good job with it. Um, does it hit the same way as if uh, Dave was doing it? Probably not, but it still lands because it's, you know, because Sammy is good. So, you know, what are we going to do? What are, we, what are we talking about here? But all right, fair enough, fair enough. So well over 1,200 probably, but as it is, I am the winner. Yes, for a, for a game that I suck at really bad, I'm, I've been doing pretty good. So the guessing game is strong with this one, but nevertheless, um, yeah, I, I mean, what else is left there to say? Uh, uh, yeah, we did it. There's another one down, man. We've got uh, 24 more left to go. That's right. 24 tracks left in the catalog. And then what happens after that's kind of up to you guys, the listener. And uh, here, here, here's what I want to point out to you. Like, you don't all have to join the Patreon. We would love that. But the thing is, if you guys want us to keep going when the show, uh, when this iteration of the show finally does end, 
let us know. Uh, you got to let us know what what we need to do. I know that a lot of the votes are uh, hit the hit the uh, the solos, uh, the solo so careers of, uh, of Sammy <laughs> and, uh, and and Dave. Let's just do the rest of the wheel tonight. Might as well. If if it, if, if, if it wasn't a school night for me, uh, then I might be like yes, but also like there's not enough beer for it. But uh, so maybe maybe when we get to like the final five or the final four, may, maybe we'll we'll push on through. But uh, that's a conversation for another day. Um, if you want that, then let us know. But what I what I bring up the Patreon just because uh, there's probably going to be more ideas more wheel ideas that uh cory and i have been kind of tinkering around with the uh, e- expressing interest in doing um it's just a time constraint and uh you know it just depends on what kind of content you guys want us to uh to do once this version of the show is done so i encourage you all to uh be like our friends like ryan powell there uh like scott monroe like uh, like kevin brown and like all the rest all the lurkers in the chat right now join the patreon and really give us your feedback and let us know what you want us to do moving forward uh so uh join the patreon podcast will rock i think it's like patreon.com slash podcast will rock uh or some I, i'm not sure what the link is but but if you want to know, go to the link you can go to triple w podcast will rock.com and we have that on the site we also have a merch store find you some merch uh our friend kevin brown's been very generous and giving us some hilarious designs i'm just going to keep preaching it until you all do it i just really want an army of you out there wearing apologies to gary t-shirts uh because yeah. eventually he'll see it and he'll ask what the hell is that all about and they're like <laughs> ah you got to tune into the show man you got to check out this show you you're, you'll uh you definitely you shouldn't <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like he should. He, he deserves his say. He, he absolutely yeah, deserves fair. his say. And and we never we we're, we're never trying to disrespect Gary. We're just simply stating what he did on this particular album doesn't work for us for the most part. And we're and that's why we apologize. It's like we're sorry, Gary, because we know you have the talent, you have the ability. That new right. extreme rips pretty pretty hard. So you know, Damn go right. listen to extreme. Um, but yeah, I just I don't know the idea. Of just of him just walking down the street one day and just seeing many many people wearing this apologies to Gary shirt. Maybe even a few of them recognize him on the street and just kind of like, mm, I, uh, 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 check it out. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck is that? The fuck <laughs> it's is like that? just just having people have to explain to him what it is, right? <laughs> and then eventually, him uh, uh, the idea is like maybe he'll join us on the show one day, or maybe he'll at least just send us a tweet going like, please stop. Please yeah. leave me alone. <laughs> like, leave, leave me. Let it just, just let it in. Let it yeah, die. Okay? I don't want to know. <laughs> and we will cherish that if that is his answer. That that will be a term. Uh, Michael says Michael. Uh, Gary and Extreme yeah. will be in uh, will be in town in February. Uh, what town? Get is a that, shirt. Michael? Um, yeah, get get a apologies <laughs> to Gary shirt. Wear it. Uh, make sure he sees it, and uh, hopefully his his interest will be piqued, and he'll ask yep. you. And when he does. You send him our way, and uh, he is, he'll be in for either a treat or not a treat. <laughs> I don't know, but I am uh, very excited at the prospect. So www.podcastlerock.com. Uh, we have a merch store, as I said, Patreon link, uh, all the backlog episodes. So if you miss one and uh, you don't feel like hitting up a Spotify podcast or Apple or whatever, just you go to the website. It's all there. Um, and then... We have, uh, as I mentioned, the patrons and uh, all of you lovely patrons. I'll go ahead and read out the list of all of you right now. Thank you so much to Matt Lacoste, Nate from the Deep Purple Podcast, Rave of Flav, Josh Caldwell, Greg Zito, Michael Griffith, Chaz Charles, Sean McGinnity, Kevin Brown, Para Lineker, Scott Monroe, Ryan Powell, Jeff Brewer, Ben Andriozzi, Tom Armbruster, Scott Everett, Heath McCoy, Janice Risco, Brad Gould, uh, Michael T himself, uh, the aforementioned Michael, and Davey Lee Smith. Thank you all so much uh, for your continued contributions. And again, yeah, I know you guys always tell us uh, we should keep going once the show's done, and you've been very vocal about that. Keep the conversation alive because you know Corey have if if Corey and I have ha- has some ideas that uh, we like to uh, maybe explore. If you guys want to hear it, so let us know, uh, Corey. Always a pleasure, my dude. Can you let the people uh, uh, know where they can find other like-minded podcasts like ours? Well, they can find other shows at the Deep Dive Podcast Network. 
www.deepdivepodcastnetwork.com where you can find such shows as uh, Backtracks Aerosmith Revisited featuring myself and Scott Haskin, Backtracks Theme Music featuring myself and John Mariano, uh, The Ultimate Catalog Clash with myself and Kevin Brown. Season one is breaking down Phil Collins' era genesis. We're about to record the wrap-up episode for season one. And then uh, since I'm going to win, I'll get to pick the band for season two, and it's going to be somebody Kevin hates. Uh, then we have, of course, Kevin Brown does the Tom Petty Project and Seaside Pod Review with his good buddy Randy Woods. Then we have uh, Scott Haskin at Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast, Nate and John at the Deep Purple Podcast, the Simple Man at Skinnered Reconsidered, Terry T-Bone Mathley at T-Bone's Prime Cuts on the other side, Rye at Sabbath Bloody Podcast, Paul Joan David at In the Lap of the Pods, Andy and Matt at Hawk Binge, Eric and Jonathan at Maiden A to Z, Daniel and Josh at Diary of the Mad Men, the Ultimate Aussie Podcast, Ben and Sam at Universally Speaking, the Red Hot Chili Peppers Podcast, George and Hattie at the Judas Priest Cast, Clay and Rye at North by South Podcast, Greg and Jonathan at So Far, So Pod, So What, Quinn Ed and Volume for All, Sav, Nick, Steve, and Mark at the Rock Roulette Podcast, Chaz and Greg at Regarding Lulu, Chaz and Chats at Rush Rash, Chaz and Wolfie at Regarding Roger, that's Regarding Roger Waters, not Roger Moore, and of course, uh, other great shows such as the Sean Geek and Fast Fret podcast just dropped a great episode this week uh, about mental health. Everybody should check out. Sean had some nice things to say about myself and Mark. So thank you very much for that, Mr. McGinnity. Yeah. Then we have You're All Doomed, the Friday the 13th podcast, the DLR cast, the bogus Oda show. They got to meet Sammy Hagar and have an interview with them. That episode is upcoming. Make sure you check that out. Booked on Rock with the legendary Eric Senich. Dissect that film. Three's Company 2, a rewatch podcast, and of course, the one and only Pot of Thunder, the recognized symbol of excellence in rock and roll podcasting. Hell yeah. Uh, big shout out to our uh, our guest panelist, honorary member of the show, Kelsey. Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming back, man. You were, again, you were in high demand. People were very curious as to when you were going to show back up on the show, and uh, here you are. So that'll make the listeners very happy. Um, so thank you so much. And uh, hey, let the people know where they can find you if they want to give you a follow and what you got going on. Well, thank you for having me. First of all, I wanted to say your episode that you guys did. I think it was um, the one where I sent you guys a message or I, Kevin actually asked me to do a message for you guys. And I heard what you got. I was like listening. I actually listened to it when I was in California and I was like fangirling over what you guys said over me, even though like, like I haven't been on this show before. And like, you guys don't ask me back. Like I'm always honored to be here. First of all, I always love, like I said, I can always talk about Van Halen and you guys make it so fun and so inviting and um, so welcome for me to be here. So uh, people can find me at Kelsey Van Halen. That's pretty much all my socials. And um, my Twitter is probably the best place to follow me. That's where I talk about Van Halen, lots of classic rock stuff and hockey every once in a while. So right on right on but yes uh always a pleasure always a fun time uh hopefully uh we'll get get you back soon absolutely uh, you know because yes, we're because we're winding down we are winding down so you know we gotta we gotta get as much of our uh reoccurring uh guests as possible um and don't forget we got live shows coming up you guys because we're we're finishing uh several albums here pretty shortly i think we got one for left for 1984 that will be fun uh, We've got we got the one left for uh, Van Halen three. Just please let's put it out of its misery. Uh, and uh, um, I think uh, there there might be another one, but we're close. Or the other, we're we're getting close. We're getting close, you guys. So yeah, everything um, else has at least two. Uh, I think enough, Van Halen one actually has the most. It's got one, two, three left on that one. So. That's crazy. So uh, even a uh, for unlawful, I thought that was the one we. Uh, Oh, yeah, what do we got on Foreign Lawful? We've, We've got, got one, Top two, of the World, right? And Spanked. Yeah, yeah, so we got four. Yeah, so yeah, that and, uh, that one was the one dome. we... Uh, that's right. We we, we predicted that uh, the fuck album might be uh, the one we uh, spend the most time talking about in these later episodes just because mm -hmm. it's the one we have left. And I'm not mad about that. So, you know, suck it, haters. That's what's going to happen. So uh, <laughs> thank you, Kevin. Thank you thank to you the guys. lurkers. Again, you are uh, the, the patrons all... all we love having you guys involved in the chat. It really, it makes uh, the conversation easier for us. And it's also just entertaining that way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so thank you. So keep up the good work, keep up uh, rocking out and celebrating the music of this band that we absolutely love. We can be, uh, uh, we can analyze and we can be critical. It'll be the last one. I hope not. That. 
I'm not sure if that's if that'll be like an ironic twist or if that's just like <laughs> I don't it'll know. be crazy like, because the low if it does the lower like the it's like the last four or five you're like all right <laughs> when we go <gonna> spin it <laughs> maybe uh maybe our last song maybe we'll we'll, we'll do it live and maybe hopefully oh, it'll be, be human fun. oh that's maybe it'll idea. be humans being so that uh so that chaz can lose his damn mind yeah uh, that's a good real. Idea. <laughs> <laughs> maybe well we're uh we'll, we'll talk it over uh but hey you the audience let us know should we do that when we finally get down to the last one should we make it a live show and just get everybody uh in the conversation as we can let us know make your voices heard you guys are really really interactive and we love that uh it keeps the 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 energy going and it keeps us feeling alive and uh, makes us want to keep doing this longer and i mean frankly Corey's going to keep going because all of the podcasts are going to be absorbed by him and we're all under the cmpu soon he is the <laughs> he is the galactus to this marvel universe and uh you're all doomed and that's not a pun. That's just a fact. So, <laughs> but until that time, on behalf of Kelsey and Corey and myself, we are and the podcast will rock and we will rock you later. Later.